Hi, I'm Juliet. I am a history lecturer at a British university. This is Freya. And we are in the beautiful town of Bridgenorth in Shropshire. We are armed with haunted Shropshire and come with us as we explore the history and the hauntings of this town. There's been a settlement at Bridgenorth since at least 895 CE when a Danish camp was set up at Quatbridge. A castle at Bridge was listed in 912. Its name comes from the bridge over the River Severn in the middle of the town, which was built a bit further north than nearby Quatford's older bridge. We start at the Falcon Hotel, which is a 17th century coaching inn, and it's right by the car park. In fact, the car park is the car park for the hotel, which is pretty handy. Coaching inns were basically the motorway service stations of the early modern period providing food, drink and somewhere to sleep for human travellers, and stables, food and drink for horses, plus the opportunity to change tired teams of horses for a fresh one. I haven't yet found out whether they overcharged as much as motorway service stations do, but the modern Falcon Hotel has a bar and restaurant serving Asian street food whose prices seem pretty standard. According to Haunted Shropshire, some years ago an old man named Willie would come in at lunchtime with his secretary for lunch, and as he left he would wink, tip the staff and say, don't tell my wife I was here at lunchtime. It went on for many years, until he went on a cruise and never came home again. One day, one of the ex-members of staff who had known Willie was sitting in the dining room having lunch. She suddenly felt someone standing behind her. Just then, the champagne glasses on the Welsh dresser shattered for no reason. She sensed it was Willie because she suddenly found herself saying, of course I won't tell your wife you were here. When staff came on duty that evening, having replaced all the champagne glasses, the table at which Willie always sat was found with everything disarranged and the glasses broken. Top of the list of diners that night were Willie's widow and son. Oh dear, that's a bit of a sad story really. But it's a very nice hotel. Bridge North is divided into two parts, High Town and Low Town. These are connected by its historic Cliff Railway, now recently reopened after extensive renovation work. Cliff Railways were very popular at seaside resorts in the late 1800s. I can also recommend the Cliff Railways connecting Linton and Lynmouth in Devon and in Aberystwyth in Mid Wales. The one in Bridge North, of course, is inland and opened on the 7th of July 1892. The railway only costs £2 return to ride and it's free for dogs and children under five. So although it's quite easy for a fairly fit person to climb up to High Town on foot and there's plenty of steps or there's a slope, we'll come to Cartway later, it's a lot more fun to ride the Cliff Railway. From the Cliff Railway, Freya and I headed to our next haunted site, Bridge North Castle, while I got to grips with how to use my new fancy camera equipment and gimbal. Bridge North Castle was founded in 1101 by Robert de Belém, the Earl of Shrewsbury. This was only 35 years after the invasion of England by William of Normandy and his Normans, Viking-descended men who had been living in what is now northern France. Robert had a reputation for cruelty, being described by Orderic Vitalis in his Historia Ecclesiastica as grasping and cruel, an implacable persecutor of the Church of God and the poor, unequalled for his iniquity in the whole Christian era quite some statement. Robert de Belém had been part of a large-scale rebellion against the new King Henry I in 1101, and his building of Bridge North Castle did not have royal approval. In 1102, Henry besieged Robert's English castles, including Bridge North, and took them from him, sending Robert fleeing to Normandy, where he rebelled again in 1110 to 1112 and was eventually imprisoned until his death sometime after 1130. Unfortunately, there is very little left of the castle now because it was mostly destroyed in the English Civil War. The war known as the English Civil War was actually the third civil war fought in England, after the anarchy fought between Stephen and Matilda, 1138-1153, and the Wars of the Roses fought between the Houses of York and Lancaster, 1455-1487. The English Civil War was part of a wider set of Wars of the Three Kingdoms between England, Scotland and Ireland. It lasted 1642-1651 and was fought between King Charles I and his Royalists, or Cavaliers, and Oliver Cromwell and his Parliamentarians, or Roundheads. The history of the English Parliament goes all the way back to 1215, when King John signed the Magna Carta to give his barons the right to consult with and advise the king in his great council. The Magna Carta also established that the king was subject to the law. The word Parliament was first used for the Great Council in 1236. By the time Charles I's father, James VI of Scotland, became James I of England in 1603, Parliament was made up of two houses, the House of Lords, made up of bishops, archbishops and members of the aristocracy, and the House of Commons, made up of representatives from towns and counties. Scotland had also had its own Parliament since 1235, but in Scotland the King tended to have a bit more power. 
so there was frequent conflict between first James and then his son Charles over how much power belonged to the king by the divine right of kings and how much belonged to Parliament. By the 1st of June 1642 things came to a head when the English Parliament sent King Charles 19 propositions demanding a larger share in the government of the kingdom, which the king rejected. War broke out and cities and towns declared their support for one side or the other. Bridge North was held for the King. On 31st of March 1646, parliamentary forces entered St Leonard's Close in High Town in Bridge North and killed the Royalists' local leader, Colonel Billingsley. The Royalists retreated inside the castle but were besieged and surrendered to the parliamentarians on the 26th of April 1646, and the Roundheads leader, Oliver Cromwell, ordered the complete destruction of the castle. Charles I lost the war at the battles of Naseby and Langport in summer 1646 and lost his head to the executioner's axe on 30th January 1649 on charges of treason. His son, also called Charles, had fled to France where he was proclaimed King Charles II in exile on 17th February 1649, though he did not return to England until 23rd of May 1660, following the death of Oliver Cromwell on the 3rd of September 1658. So here we are at Bridge North Castle, which is apparently haunted by a ghostly rider. He is heard fast approaching what was the keep on a cobbled surface. The rider dismounts and is heard running in the direction of what used to be the inner keep. No one has actually seen this ghost, but they've heard it on winter nights. It's believed to be a royalist dispatch rider who was killed on his way to tell his mother to escape Bridge North because the parliamentarians were on their way to attack the town. And the horse is said to then proceed to what was his mother's house in a nearby street. So this is East Castle Street, and that's the church bells ringing. They'll stop in a minute. So this is East Castle Street, where the ghostly rider and then runner is said to arrive at the door of what was his mother's house, which is pushed open and booted footfall heard running upstairs to what was her bedchamber. And it sounds like the horse went up the stairs too, which I don't know how that works, and horses can't go downstairs once they go up them, but there you go. From this spot near the castle, Freya and I headed along East Castle Street towards the High Street, under ever-darkening, cloudy skies. We're now at the High Street, where number 11 is supposedly haunted by an unknown entity, uh, but one of the reports is that um, a dog that somebody tried to bring into the house was so anxious they wouldn't go anywhere near it. So since I am accompanied by dog, we won't try and investigate that one. The High Street is dominated by the black and white building that is Bridge North Town Hall, built in 1650. On the weekends you can usually find several market stalls underneath the arches and I must resist going into fat face. I'm going to go bankrupt if I keep going into fat face. Further down the high street is the North Gate, home of the North Gate Museum. The gate itself is medieval and the museum was founded in 1951. The museum is well worth a visit. It's entirely staffed by volunteers, it's very reasonably priced, and it's full of fascinating artefacts and details from Bridges North's history. We are now outside the Crown Hotel, which used to be the Crown and Raven, and this had had a few hauntings, uh, including Alsatian dogs getting upset, so we won't go any nearer than this. And there had been things like um, a young woman who seemed to come from nowhere and disappeared and no one knew who she was. So one evening they held a seance and received a message from a young girl. She said she was a 19-year-old called Evie and she had been a chambermaid. She was engaged to a man but found out he was having an affair with somebody else, so she killed him. <laughs> she was then executed for murder but had enjoyed her time at the Crown of Raven and wanted to stay, so that's um, dramatic. From the Crown, Freya and I headed back down the High Street in the opposite direction. The High Street looks the same either way around, so we didn't film most of that. Then we came to the top of Cartway, which up until 1786 was the only route for carts to get between Low Town and High Town. As a result, it was full of pubs and other places to eat, though now the Black Boy, which we will get to shortly, is the only remaining pub. We have now reached Cartway, a very steep slope. There is an excellent tea room. Violet's Tea Room just behind me there. Ooh. While I'm recommending local places to eat, I also want to give a shout out to Giovanni's at the top of Cartway, which is my favourite place to eat in Bridge North. It does ice creams and clep made by an actual French person, and if you stop in on a quiet weekday you might even be able to get a proper Breton buckwheat galette. We didn't stop in during our ghost tour because we could see that the rain was coming, though unlike Violet's Tea Room they do allow dogs at Giovanni's. 
but I came back at the weekend with my family because I love it and I am delighted to see that it has survived the COVID lockdowns. But back to the ghosts of Cartway. Here, two police officers reported seeing a young woman in a long black cloak that looked like fancy dress. We saw her several times and then on one occasion she disappeared right through a wall. People keep thinking that she's somebody who committed suicide, but I think that's just because they say that about ghosts all the time. Freya and I continued about halfway down Cartway, and then we stopped at a tiny bit of public park which marks the site of the medieval friary. We have reached the site of the old Franciscan friary, which was founded in the 1200s, but abandoned, given over to the king in the dissolution of the monasteries, and had been completely destroyed by the 19th century. Bridge North Franciscan Friary was founded sometime between 1224 and 1244 in what was at the time the outskirts of the town in the poorer quarters, probably just outside the town wall. That fits with the aims of the Franciscan Order, which was founded by St Francis of Assisi in 1209 and is still going strong today, and which focuses on extreme poverty, not allowing ownership of anything and living a very austere ascetic lifestyle. The friary was given over to King Henry VIII in 1538 during the dissolution of the monasteries. In 1534, in the Act of Supremacy, Henry VIII was made the supreme head of the church in England, removing the authority of the Pope and allowing him to divorce his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, and marry his second, Anne Boleyn. This was the founding of the Church of England, though the theology of the Anglican Church was really developed later by Henry's son and successor, Edward VI. However, Henry did start to make some changes, and there was widespread religious change in Europe happening at the same time. Martin Luther had published his 95 Theses in 1517, and he had published a treatise called On the Monastic Vows, arguing against the very existence of monasticism in 1521. At the time of the Act of Supremacy, there were nearly 900 religious houses in England, some of them very wealthy. So Henry decided that, now that he was head of the church, the monasteries should be got rid of altogether and their wealth go to him. The process started with the Suppression of Religious Houses Act of 1535 and continued until 1541, suppressing all the monasteries in England, driving monks and nuns into exile and destroying nearly all their buildings, including the friary at Bridge North. But long before that, there was a monk at the friary known as Old Mo, who was known for drinking and enjoying the company of ladies of the night. Old Mo one night was returning from a night out when he was confronted, bludgeoned and poisoned, and no one knows where his body was disposed of. And his ghost has been seen many times since. The friary was eventually turned into a carpet factory for a while, and then that was turned into housing, so there's not really anything left. There's a little bit of park with a nice view of the river. As you can see, the rain has started, and I am hoping my fancy new equipment is relatively waterproof. As the rain started to come down, Freya and I headed on down Cartway towards the Black Boy Inn. As the sign on the front proclaims, the pub is named after Charles II, the son of Charles I, whom the town had supported in the Civil War. The nickname came from his long black hair. He had been referred to as a tall black man in wanted posters after his escape following a royalist defeat at the Battle of Worcester. The description of black or dark at the time was used for people with dark hair as well as for people with dark skin. The pub was first licensed in 1790 and has actually moved around Cartway a bit before settling at its current location, number 58, in 1889. We have now reached the Black Boy Inn. I have switched to the iPhone because it is chucking it down now and I don't know how waterproof my new camera is. So, the story here is that uh, once the landlord and his wife were watching television when their five-year-old daughter began screaming from her bedroom upstairs. Their terrified child was unable to speak and the next morning she told them she'd seen a woman dressed in a beautiful blue dress entering her room who stood there staring at her and ever since then they had to keep the lights on to reassure their daughter. I'm not surprised. That sounds terrifying. As the rain came down, Freya and I hurried down the rest of Cartway and did a rather quick stop at our final destination, the Bassa Villa, formerly known as the Magpie House. This 16th century building is now a hotel and has been run as a restaurant, pub or hotel for many years. We have now, I'm glad to say, as it rains even more, reached our final stop. This is one of the most haunted locations in Bridge North. Uh, two children were sadly drowned in a cellar. A uh, usual story is the river suddenly flooded when they were playing down there. Although more recently, in 2015, the landlord told the Shropshire Star they'd actually discovered a well down in the cellar. That might be where the children drowned. 
The landlord, Nick Bevan, told the star that he's always heard things in the cellar when he'd worked there years before for somebody else, and that he'd even been grabbed by the arm down there once. It's haunted by both the spirits of the children, who can be heard in the cellar, but also of a mourning woman in black, who is, of course, the ghost of their mother. At that point, the rain turned to hail, and Freya and I ran all the way back over the bridge at the bottom of the cliff railway, past the Falcon Hotel, and back to the car park. We did not film most of this as we were too busy running, and even using my iPhone, I didn't want it to get that wet. Well, we've made it back to the car. I don't know if you can hear the hail on the windows. I have one very wet doggy with me. Hey, Freya, you're a bit wet and feeling sorry for yourself, aren't you, pup? Yes. Hello. Hey. Whew. So, yes, considering the camera equipment is brand new and ludicrously expensive, I think it was a good call switching to the iPhone at the end there. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this ghostly tour of Bridge North. A little bit about its history, a little bit about its hauntings. If you would like to see more videos like this, then please let me know. I enjoyed filming it, so try and avoid the hailstorm next time. But I have plenty more places that I could do a little history and ghost tour of for YouTube. So. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to my channel for myth, legend, folklore, ghost stories, witchcraft and magic, and weird and wonderful history in general. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! The poor pup. She's a bit bedraggled now.